Hello guys, welcome to this video on how I painted this Nurgle character. Uh, before we get started, I'll just quickly run through what I used. I used some paints from the Age of Sigma start set, some matte medium and some flow improver. Okay, I'm working on a white primed figure. It's got to be a good flat coat of white on this one. First of all I'm mixing up some flesh tones with some Rakarth flesh and some white and some flow improver as you just saw there. I actually add the flow improver with a little syringe that I've got which allows me to add a tiny tiny drop to the mix. Mix it all together, use my big flat brush, give it a good flat coat on the flesh areas. Uh, if you haven't got any flow improver it's, it's not essential, you can use water instead. But if you ever do get a chance to try flow improver, it could change your life. It is good stuff. Anyway, let's not see the whole of that thing, that's pretty boring watching somebody base coat a figure. Uh, so I use the flat brush, which is the biggest brush, as much as I can and then when the detail does get too small for me, I swap to a slightly smaller brush, but it's still quite a big brush, and then I'm giving it a quick blast with the hairdryer. Okay, now we're on to some more flesh tones. Going to do a bit of shading. So I've got some Bugman's Glow there, as you can see, and I've mixed it in with the original mix of light flesh, and now I'm adding some matte medium straight from the tub. This makes the consistency a little bit more viscose, a little bit more sticky. So it's really good for adding to your model if you want your paint to stay in a certain area and not run. So it's the opposite of making it flowy. So I'm just applying it around the sores and in all the different creases. So just going back to the mediums, the, the matte medium makes your paint thicker the flow improver makes it a little bit more thin, thinner, more thinner, thin, uh, more thin. So you've got both effects. Again, I'm speeding up here because you don't want to see me do this on every single saw on the body because there's quite a lot of them. Quick blast and we are done. Quite a long blast. Obviously, wanted that really dry. So now I'm adding in some Celestra Grey to the mix. Uh, there's a tiny bit of the flesh mix in there. There's the Flow Improver. I've got two different colours on the go there. One is mostly grey, and one is flesh with a bit of grey. It's just to get a variety of tones. And then I'm going in, not around the sores this time, more in the joints on the hand, for example, and the folds of the skin under the, what do you call those, boobs, man boobs, yeah, all the folds of flesh, basically. doing here is I've got um, an older brush and I'm just dampening it in some water dry it off on my tissue and then I'm using it to remove any excess paint that I don't want it so this is the shade color that I've put on uh, some of it will have gone on to areas that I don't really want it where I want it to be quite bright and so I'm just rubbing it off with that damp brush so now I've got some uh, what color is that nice horn gloom is it called, the bluish colour, and I'm adding it into the original flesh mix, and I'm using that as a shade, and I'm applying that around the sores mostly, and into some of the deeper crevices. Again, it's just another tone, so you're slowly building up tones onto your light undercoat. What I tend to do is start from a very light colour, 
gradually add darker and darker shades. I'm not a huge fan of highlighting, I prefer to shade down rather than highlight up. So here we go again with the speeded up film. Oh no, I've slowed down again. So I'm just working backwards and forwards. Uh, now I'm going with more of a blue tone. Quite often I find blue on flesh is really nice because it tends to neutralize the orange tones that you quite often get in a fleshy color and it's good for the, some of the deeper areas so if you've got a model and you want to apply shade to the flesh it's quite a good idea to try a bit of a blue and again here I've got my dampened older brush and I'm just using the side of the bristles as you can see to remove some of those pigments this means I don't have to go back in and highlight later on with white or whatever now we're on to putting on some red. I've got the corn red. I will have added, oh here we go, I'm adding some flow improver or you can just use water. I'm just thinning it down very very slightly and I'm going to put it into all the sore areas. Uh, I'll be quite careful here, you don't have to be ultra careful. It's good to just get it in the, in the holes if you can. If you slip and get it somewhere else it's not a disaster because Nurgle figures are quite forgiving uh, you can make a mess and pretend you meant to do that the very first saw that I put the paint in there was quite a lot of paint I didn't, I didn't bother wiping it off I just left it in there and then I'm just picking it up now and putting it into others obviously I'm putting some into the exposed gut area and then at the end I'm using a number three brush just to pull down a few areas of those red so that it looks like it's seeping out of the holes and the, and the sores uh, it's a good idea to do this at the end when you've done everything because your paint is slightly dry and it's slightly sticky if you do it straight away you'll get a smudge rather than a fine line so now we're going back in with the blue, the night horn gloom the red is still wet at this point and obviously when you mix the blue with the red you get a purpley colour and because the blue is quite dilute and the red has been diluted you get more of a lilac than a purple colour but it's, it's a good colour for the innards, the guts and I'm also using it on the bottom of each of the holes in his body just to give a little bit of shade into those sores so it'll end up when it's dry it'll end up being red at the top and more purple towards the bottom it's not essential to do that it's just nice to do you can be a little bit random here just spread it around where you think it should go I'm, I'm concentrating on the, the hole in his guts because I think that's one of the focal points Yeah, let's have a look what we've done so far. Looking good, or should that be bad? And again, lifting off a few more colours with the damp brush. Oh, right, here we go, we're on to the armour now. I'm using the Celestra Grey, and I've also got a little well of Mournfang Brown. Uh, both of these will have been thinned down with water or flow improver, whichever you've got so that it goes on nice and smooth and you just want a nice even coat of the grey to start with notice again I'm starting from the light colour and working up yeah sorry about this funny camera angle sometimes you've just got to twist your model all the way around not very good for filming Okay, once all the areas are on flat grey, I'm using the brown, which I've mixed into the grey for a light brown. And I'm kind of using it as a wash, a bit like I did with the red on the sore areas. I'm just dabbing it on, I'm going for the, the holes in the armour mostly, but random as well. And I'm using the darker brown as well as the lighter brown. I'm just randomly applying them both and notice that the grey paint at this point is still wet 
So I'm mixing the wet brown into a wettish grey. It's drying obviously, but it's not fully dry. And so you get this random effect with the two paints merged together. You're trying to aim to keep some of the grey on there and some brown. You don't want an even coat, it's got to look like this mess and then I'm drying it. Good try with the hair dryer. And when, you get, when it's dry it's patchy, patchy armour, that's fine. Now I'm getting some brown and I've got an old brush here and I've mixed a little bit of black in it I think. And I've got my matte medium to make the paint thicker. Do you remember that thick thin thing we talked about? So now I'm dabbing it on and it's going to stay in the recesses. You can see the medium there going onto the onto the shoulder pad. I do that all over the armour, obviously. It looks like this toffee fudge colour. It's a little bit shiny because of the flow improver. Now I've got my damp brush and I'm just lifting a few areas off. See that the paint is obviously still sticky or wet because it's coming off quite easily. That's just water that I'm using to lift it off with. I'm trying to lift it off from the edges to give a very, very basic highlight. The old hair dryer again. And he's done. So now we've got some black. A spot of flow improver. Two spots. Ooh, radical. Mix it all together and apply it onto the armour plating. So this is a glaze, a very heavy glaze if you like, or a wash, depends what you want to call it. So it's going to go over everything and you, you might think, well, what was the point in doing all that brown? If you're just going to paint all over it with black. But because we've added the flow improver and there's a bit of water in there, the black's a little bit translucent. And so the brown underneath will show through. So think of it as a, a glaze. So I'm, I'm using my old, the mixing brush there to apply it. I'll probably switch to a, a better brush at some point. There we go. So when I'm trying to apply the paint to the trickier areas where you need a little bit more control you need a decent brush but otherwise I can just use the brush that I've used to mix the paint with and there we go that's the shoulder pad and then water on a damp brush again to just lift a few of the areas of the black off especially on the edges but in random points as well too All of the armour looks a bit like this. Not looking bad. Okay, I've gone back in now with some Monfang Brown and I'm going. There'll be some flow improver in there. I'm just dropping it into the holes and into a few of the crevices and cracks around the horns. I'm basically just reinforcing the brown rusty type effect. Incidentally if you actually do want to see absolutely everything on these speeded up sections, sorry I lost my picture there, you can um, 
slow the film down it's speeded up by four so if you go down to a quarter speed you'll see it in real time so now I'm applying the bass uh, what's this called Armageddon dust is it yeah I'm applying it quite uh, diluted here it'll just be water so it's quite a fluid effect on the bass and then I'm taking some off the bass and dabbing it onto the armour because the starter set doesn't have any yellow tones and this is the only way I can use yellow or ochre I would call this rather than yellow right so now I'm using some lead belcher and I'm just using an old blur brush and I'm just dabbing it on the edges of the plate armor I'm just showing you here on the shoulder pad uh, I can see that I've also painted the chain mail there I wouldn't have used the old brush for that I would have used a, a decent brush I've painted the axe head as well speed it up to go all over the arm and notice that I've switched to a, a decent brush there because it's a little bit trickier to get to some of those areas picking out edges of the armour and some of the holes and so on and there he is so this is day two I always leave I tend to leave armour areas overnight to fully dry and I've mixed up a grey mix which from the background you can see I've got the Mornfang brown and the Cantor blue mix them together and you get this grey brown mix and then I'm using it to wash the metal areas, the axe head. I'm also using it to wash the weapon handle which I've obviously painted in the Celestra grey there. Here we go, here's the male being washed with the grey mix, brown mix. Oh, whacking some on the base as well though. Anyway where you think you want some murky brown grey shading I suppose, even the skulls get a, a little tickle and then it's back to the dampened old brush and I'm lifting it off lifting off the brown wash to try to leave the edges so this means I don't have to go back in and, and highlight later on now back to the Montfrang brown to put some rust effect on the axe head and other areas put some on the horns there and the skull and then I'm going back to the dampened brush just to remove so what you're probably not in a pattern here I, I tend to apply paint work my way around the model and then go back with a dampened brush just to lift it off in a few areas uh, lifting it off with a damp brush it kind of not only lifts it off it, it dilutes it a little bit as well so you get more of a variation in the tone instead of just one tone of brown it it makes it lighter in some areas and darker in others and of course you can just adjust this to your taste so anywhere where you think it's too dark you can rub it off with the damp brush and anywhere you think it needs more apply a bit more and this is the process that I tend to use going backwards and forwards applying the paint lifting some off find some more and so on a dryer and it's not looking too bad so I'm going back to the grey mix now and I'm starting to put some shading 
on the horns and the skull, the bone areas, and where I think it's needed uh, on the strap that's going across his chest and his back. Into the deeper areas of the body, so where his arm meets his body. It's quite a dilute mix, so it's not too strong on the light of flesh. So now I'm carefully applying the Mournfang Brown that'll be onto the leather strap. Carefully does it, and onto the arms. Where's he on? There he is. Yeah, so just picking out some more brown areas. That'll be the little cord that's holding on the skull. Now I'm doing the loincloth, starting off with brown, doing the top half in, in the brown colour. And then I switch to the Bugman's Glow, which is more of a fleshy reddish colour. And do the lower half of the cloth. And because the both paints are still wet at this point, there's a there's a kind of a merging together of them. It's not a blend exactly, but because the colours are quite close to each other and then yeah, you guessed it, damp brush lifting off a few areas where you want the highlights. The thing about that process is you, you need to be fairly quick because if your paint's dry you won't be able to lift anything off or you'll struggle to. Here we go now carefully shading the leather straps and the loincloth. This will be with the yeah, with the grey mix, which if you remember was blue and brown mixed together. Mm, I wonder what his BMI is. So I'm applying the shade quite thickly along the top edge where the skin is and then just uh, diluting it a little bit and run it down the rest of the loincloth in a slightly thinner fashion. And then here I'm just I'm applying it where the loincloth meets the chainmail and meets the skin, kind of like a black lining if you like, but with grey grey lining. Right now that's some matte medium. It's, I just, dabbed on some matte medium and then I've got my flesh, my original flesh mix and I'm just bringing back a little bit of the flesh area on the gut because I must have thought it was too red. So anywhere where I think it's the shading's gone a bit too far I can bring the original flesh colour back and then I will remove some of it with the edge of the brush as usual and then I'll have to go back in again with some of the red because all this work on highlighting the flesh has removed some of the red areas. So I mustn't have been happy with the flesh there and I'm just, there we go, there's the red. A lot of the red has disappeared in all that process, so I've gone back in. Oh, and we're finished. So yeah, I ran out of film at this point. Uh, there's one other thing to talk about, and that's the the blue colour on the armour. That's a mix of the Nighthawk Gloom and some of the yellow pigment from the basing colour. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. hope you found it useful. Leave any comments below. I'll see you next time.